It's almost the case that we've got the Empire fighting back through the program tonight. Now, if you look really closely at the way the modern day politically correct movement is mobilising, organised and operates, you might find that all roads lead to taxpayer funded government agencies. I'm talking about ex extreme and aggressive protesters who hit the streets to fly anti racist flags, virtual signalling messages, advocating for refugees and even climate change alarmism. Very rarely are these suburban neighbourhood movements, rarely. The latest politician to out these organisers, these professional activists, is Liberal Upper House MP Natasha McLaren-Jones. In a speech to the House, the New South Wales Government whip claimed that these people harass, intimidate and try and silence the rest of us. She joins me now. Natasha, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chris, for having me. So where are these professional activists coming from? Where are they working? Where are they engaged firstly? Well, you've got to look at where they, they began and, and protesting has been around a long time and, and I have nothing against um, people protesting and, and that's one of the great things about the democracy of our, our country. But what we've now seen is a rise of these professional activists. They're deliberately, and I say infiltrating, minority organisations, uh, recruiting on our university campuses. They're out there uh, pushing their own agenda, whether it's human rights, animal rights uh, or the environment. And if you don't agree with them, then you're called a racist, bigot or ignorant. This is where it's become very intimidating, especially on the campus. And I get letters from university students who have differing philosophies than what seems to be the most boisterous philosophy on the campus. And they say they cannot get a word in. You're spot on. It's, that is so true. And we, we saw a horrible case a number of years ago uh, where three university students up in Queensland uh, spoke out about a, a computer lab uh, and they were taken to the Human Rights Commission and it took over three years for that case to be dealt with uh, and the court actually ruled uh, in the students' favour. And the Human Rights Commission in particular did everything they could yep. to try and nail these students. It, exactly. Um, uh, I have a little bit of a joke that, I, that I've that i been telling the last couple of days. Dad says to his boy, um, what, did you, what do you say to get what you want? And the boy replies, I'm offended. These same activists <laughs> have created an industry for those people who want to get offended by everything. It is, and that's what it is. It's 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 this outrage uh, that they deliberately go around drumming up um, amongst the community, finding issues, motivating people. And you only have to just look at the protesters uh, and the footage. Um, and a number of the people that are there are not even there wearing t-shirts or, or holding up posters that are in. in have anything to do with what they're actually protesting about. Um, and it's an angry mob, and we've seen this attack most recently, particularly on our police, which is absolutely outrageous. Yeah, there, there we have the Black Lives Matter protest organised initially by the Communist Party of Australia. So exactly. it becomes almost a membership and a club that are all extreme lefties that all get together and try and jam these issues down the throats of the majority of Australians. Now, what sort of reaction did you get in the upper house when you said that from the Greens members in the house, Natasha? I haven't, I haven't actually spoken to any of the Green members about uh. it, but I have received a lot of support um, from people across Australia, actually. I, I received an email only yesterday from someone in, in Townsville saying, good on you, um, this is about time we all stand up, because people are being pushed into not having their opinion. They're, they're, they're concerned about expressing their views. And in the Upper House, we're actually doing an inquiry that's looking at the Anti-Discrimination Act. Um, and we're looking at particularly the complaints handling um, process and whether or not uh, the, the threshold is too low. And we've received close to 200 submissions, obviously both sides. But I encourage your viewers to actually take a look at some of those submissions because there are a number of individuals that have come forward and said that they have been feel that they're being persecuted, uh, whether as, as an individual or politically, uh, for their, their views. And we've got to remember that these cases can sometimes take years to be looked at, uh, which is a financial as well as an, uh, as well as an emotional burden um, on individuals who are being, and I say, persecuted in some ways. But this is because their big disadvantage is they're not part of some minority group. That's their disadvantage, yes. isn't it? Yep, exactly. Well, I'd love you to keep going with all of this. I'm sure you've got something in mind down the track now that you've had... <laughs> such um, support from people right around Australia. Well done, well said, and thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Chris.